is there another industry um, using advanced materials that we can maybe take a lesson from? I know you mentioned aviation, but we kind of mentioned it's kind of been reversed. But is there another industry out there that we can take some take something away from? Well, um, the marine industry for many years has done lots of repairs to fiberglass components. It's on everything from you know small runabout fishing boats up to large yachts. And they're transitioning over to a lot more carbon fiber composites now, mostly on the large yachts, the big mega yachts, the multi-million dollar things. And also, of course, the race boat boats and things like that. The, uh, the last America's Cup team uh, sent a lot of people through here for yeah. training. Um, but they also get a lot of damage. They hit things in the water. And especially those race boats, when they're going so fast, they can do a lot of damage. And so uh, repairability, they've developed actually some underwater repair techniques where they can, they can literally do the repair. Somebody in scuba gear can do the repair underwater on the outside of the hull and get the resins cured without ever pulling it out. So that works well if the boat doesn't sink first. Uh, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> but uh, they've done some innovative work like that, and uh, the aerospace people have been picking up on some of that. But not too much yet, but there's interest. in Like in the airliner world, if you've got an airliner, grounded because of some damage to a carbon fiber structure and it's out at a remote location and you have to repair it out on the ramp at night in the rain, you know, how can you do that with our current materials? You can't. And so they're looking at a lot of that stuff too. It's interesting. There's there's all these different uh, industries are really helping each other out in uh, developing some of these new techniques. Yeah, actually, uh, we, we follow trends in other industries and probably some of the leading ones uh, include military and aerospace, but the auto industry is fairly unique and that it has very high volumes. Um, it also is a very competitive market. It's competitive globally. And in addition to that, we have conflicting government demands and consumer demands. I think most of the industries have a lot to learn from the auto industry, actually. We're a very aggressive industry in terms of technology deployment. I know of no industry as aggressive as the auto industry in developing advanced technologies, validating them thoroughly, and getting them into the customer's hands quickly. Aerospace has used a lot of these technologies for decades. But their product development cycle is 20 years with extensive validation and for good reason, for very good reason. In the auto industry, that's not, that's not a timeline that, that the industry can tolerate. Uh, five years for new technology, six or seven for brand new revolutionary materials. So now we have learned some things. Uh, one important thing about, at least in the aluminum area, is the recycling of the material. Scrap aluminum chips and, and trimming is very valuable. And in fact, we've adopted in the high volume aluminum producers, uh, vehicle producers, uh, a relationship with the aluminum producers with what's called closed loop recycling, where a coil gets shipped from a mill to a stamping plant, an OEM stamping plant, and that plant takes that scrap, puts it in the truck, and returns it to the mill one of the two mills that it comes from. That's been a that's been a technology that's been aggressively used in the aerospace industry for decades. So we have adopted some of the technologies that have moved forward in that industry, and that lowers the overall cost of lightweighting with aluminum. So that's been very good. And there are some other uh, learning curve issues, uh, composites uh, in the composites area, and titaniums, other materials. Certainly, those have been used in the auto, in the aerospace industry. So, and fortunately, in the aluminum area, most of the aluminum companies that supply the aerospace industry also supply the auto industry. So, the learning curve, the technology transfer, comes fairly smoothly because it's the same companies doing the same work. So, uh, and so it's been very efficient. But I think we have a lot to be proud of in the auto industry in terms of moving new technologies into the customer's hands in better products quickly. 